Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my top books of 2023. So crazy, I can't believe it's a new year and it's time to wrap up the last year. My reading last year was weird. It was weird. I don't know. I feel like I started out the year being like, I want to read like all my high fantasies and then I was hit with some like stresses and I just went like straight to like pure smut romance and I but I just feel like I really ignored a lot of my physical TBR. Uh, you know, I always have a lot of physical books that I'm accumulating but I really like ignored it a lot this year which is why towards the end of the year I really started making more like I need to go into book buying band content and just reevaluating it that way. But I feel like I really got away from reading like these types of books that I love. And I think in the beginning of last year, like I'm going to obviously be in different moods in different days. And there are some days where I was just really tired and really stressed from work. There were some like really stressful times I was going through and like a physical book just wouldn't have worked for me on those days. And then like I just need to honor all of the different moods that I have. And I want to return back to more like this YA adult fantasy that I love to read and I feel like I didn't read enough of last year while still also acknowledging that there are other genres that I also like to read. So trying to figure out how that looks like but I obviously have a lot of different things I need to read and I don't need to be just a fantasy romance girly or just a rom-com girly or just a high fantasy girly or just an alien romance girly. Like, you know what I mean? Like I can read it all. I can read it all. So with that I have my top books. Um, I couldn't narrow it down to top 10 this year. Usually I do top 10. I'm gonna do like four honorable mentions and then do the top 10 but it was really hard to narrow it down. It was really hard. Okay so my first honorable mention is House of Fruits and Ruin by Erin A. Craig. Uh, but now I'm holding it. I'm like should it go higher on the list? Oh my god this is so hard. This is so hard. Um, okay, anyways, the honorable mentions don't have an order. Okay, so we're going to start off this video with House of Fruits and Ruin by Erin A. Craig. And I got the really cool Barnes & Noble Magenta Sprayed Edge edition. And this is a follow-up to House of Salt and Sorrows, which I read by her a few years ago. And I honestly went into that book with no expectations and loved it. She does a really good mix of, like, YA fantasy and horror. And I love that, like, intersection of fantasy, romance, and horror. Like, I just eat it up every time. And Erin A. Craig is a master of that. So... In House of Roots and Ruin, we are returning to the same world, but we are following one of the other sisters, and it is now 12 years later. So we're now following Verity. Now she's living with her older sister in the Tomas mansion in this island, like, on the sea. So it's very a very, like, island-centered, like, think, like, dark, windy shores kind of area. And... She basically is not allowed to like really leave or like do anything. Her kind of older sister kind of is very protective over her and Verity is like itching to explore the world. So she gets this letter from the Duke of Bloem, which is a province that's like all focused on like flowers and beauty. So it's like people of the petal, whereas like um, the island they're on, they're people of the salt. So she gets a letter to go and be commissioned to make a portrait of the Duke's son and she wants to go and her older sister is like, no, you actually can't go because you can see ghosts and you don't know that you've been seeing ghosts your whole life. So obviously she is really angry that people were hiding that from her and she runs away and goes to this mansion anyways and she starts to feel things for the Duke's son as she's like painting the portrait and just getting closer and like I loved this it just had like such a good mix of like romance and like Verity is obviously like, a very naive character and I think this book kind of like played into her naivety and like the ending made me very concerned and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like open-ended or if there is going to be another book but it just got like really dark and twisted such beautiful descriptions Whereas like the first book was all focused on like the island type descriptions, this book was all focused on like plant descriptions and plant horror and like plant horror is just one of my favorite things. It's just one of my favorite things. So I loved this. It was so good and I am really really excited for whatever Erin A. Craig is going to read next. I do have one other book by her that I haven't read yet which is Small Favors so that needs to get read this year as I read down my physical TBR. <laughs> next on the list, this is actually my only like trad pub rom-com that goes on the list which is kind of crazy but I have a series so I'm counting them as one and that is A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon and A Demon's Guide to Wooing a Witch by Sarah Hawley. 
these were so adorable and so so cute i am obsessed and i can't wait for the next one and i'll be reading whatever miss sarah holly comes out with next because uh. so <clears throat> in this one we're following Mariel, and she's kind of like the legacy to this really powerful witch family in this town of Glimmer Falls, which is just like this small town, cozy little like paranormal haven. But she is born to one of like the really powerful families, and her mom like expects her to be like this really powerful witch, but she like really struggles with her ability. Although she loves plant magic, but plant magic is seen as kind of like an eh ability. So anyways, so she has a lot of pressure on her to perform and she's really bad at doing spells so she tries to do a summoning spell and accidentally summons a demon and this demon is a soul bargainer which means that once he is there he needs to make a bargain for her soul so like he's stuck there so it's like forced proximity and um so his name is osroth the ruthless and his problem is that his last bargain went wrong and now he actually has a soul and he's feeling things so like you know that Grinch part in the movie where it's like help me I'm feeling help me I'm feeling Ugh. like like that's literally Osroth of this whole novel because he's like how do I grapple with human emotion um but their chemistry was so good and like just a really good characters because then we have like Mariel just like really trying to figure out her family dynamics they're such a cute friend group in this and like i want to live in the town of glimmer falls it sounds so fun and like i just love them i just love them and then in this book which is the sequel we follow caladia and astaroth and astaroth has amnesia after the events of the first book and so um caladia like feels bad and helps him but like caladia kind of like hates him and caladia is like this muscle mommy badass like she's so strong and jacked and astaroth is like i want you to crush my head in between your thighs that's the kind of vibe we have going on it's a very interesting dynamic and like she just likes like punch people and he's like wow like that's really hot so love that dynamic um yeah this one is so cute and then the next one is gonna be a werewolf and a succubus and he orders her like she's like in a haunted gem or something online he just like orders it randomly one day and he's the plant shop operator and um I'm so excited. I love this like cozy paranormal like fantasy but it's also a rom-com like it's just ah, one of my favorites. Next in the honorable mention section we have Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. I think Carrie Maniscalco has made my top books like every year that she's released something <laughs> as you can see by my shrine to her in the background. So this is in set in the Kingdom of the Wicked World but now we're going fully adult and also like this plum color so beautiful. Um, this is my copy that I annotated and I have the spicy scenes tapped at the top so like there is a lot. I actually have a whole reading vlog for this book if you would like to check it out. I will link it up above but I love my reading experience with this. So we are following Envy. And he basically got involved with the Fae and now his court is in trouble. Camilla, who is living in the human realm and is an artist and basically like the game leads Envy to Camilla and they basically have to work together in this wicked Fae game and it is spicy and it's just like a big game of like cat and mouse and like what I love about this series is that the girlies, you know what, they're not perfect. They have a sin that they lean into, which is why they are paired with a demon of sin. So I think that's why people either like click with these books or they don't. Camilla and Envy like stoke each other's jealousy on purpose, but like that's their dynamic because he is literally the Prince of Envy. So I just find that these books do like a very interesting job of like exploring some of those less glamorous, unlikable female main character emotions in the leading ladies and i don't know i thought it was really fun and kind of sexy the way that they just like would make each other jealous and i had a really fun time reading this we get to expand the world a little bit and i'm just having a grand old time and i'm so excited for the next one which is gonna be called throne of secrets and it's following gluttony the last before we get into the, the official top 10 is the a good girl's guide to murder trilogy so i read this on audio i do want to pick up the physical books at some point i just haven't gotten around to it yet i have not read a young adult thriller in a very long time and this series honestly pleasantly surprised me and kind of blew me away so we're following pip and she is living in this town where there is a few grades above her this famous kind of like 
disappearance case and she thinks that like the person that they accused was actually innocent so she's been researching this case and so for her senior thesis she's like I'm gonna actually try and find who really did it but obviously since it's in the town like there are people involved and like crazy stuff starts happening but what I really liked about these on audio especially is I thought the audiobook was really good because it does start to get to be multimedia like there's podcast element there's like recordings of different things and it was really really fun to read on audio and I just had such a fun experience binging the series that way. Okay, so in number 10, we have Gorgeous Gruesome Faces by Linda Chang, which this is actually an audiobook that I recently listened to that I also still need to pick up a physical copy, which I want to do, just haven't gotten around to it yet. And this is sapphic K-pop horror, and I was so excited for it, and it honestly delivered on everything that I wanted. We are following <clears throat> Sunny, who was on a Glee-esque K-pop TV show, um, and then tragedy strikes and that tv show kind of gets cancelled and Sunny goes back into like obscurity and then there is a trainee camp where she finds out that the other girl that was in that first group with her Candy who she was like kind of obsessed with is going to be there and she wants answers for what happened when their group fell apart and so she kind of follows her there to get answers and things get crazy. I thought it was such a really interesting commentary on k-pop in general and like the beauty standards and the lengths that people have to go to to meet these unrealistic standards and it was just very engaging and thrilling and obviously you have that like sapphic element to it too which ugh, it was just so good it was just so good so like there was i just highly recommend it i really loved it and the audiobook also was fantastic and number nine is the clacanian series by victoria Aveline. this was the year that alien romance kind of took over my life so the first book in the claiming series I'm just kind of counting this as a whole because I love all of them I literally binged the whole series and I just had so much fun alien romance is like if you just really want like the lightest smuttiest like fun time because they are kind of insane and you really really have to suspend your disbelief I love them so much and especially the claiming series is one of my favorites in um, this world we have a bunch of human women that were abducted and they crash land on this planet which is typically how many alien romances start. So they crash land on this planet and they escape and they find the Clocanian society. So in the, in the society the ratio of like men to women is 20 to 1. So they are having like a big population crisis and so they have these marriage ceremonies where women will select a husband and be married to him for three months and then to like see if he's a good match she would want to have a child with him and then she, if she does like have a child with him and they can conceive then like she also will then like move on to someone else and like the men will raise the children so it's a very interesting because it's kind of like a flipped gender dynamic of what we experience here on earth <laughs> it's interesting okay anyway so in this book the husbands have to go to husbandry school to learn how to be a good husband so, like they cook they clean they do everything i will say the beginning books probably focus more on this like husband school thing and then kind of like as the books progress we get um pairings of like aliens from like other parts of the like other cities so like other what is it called cultures on the planet too which i think is a really interesting and fun way to kind of have like different scenarios within the same situation so some of them focus less on like that husband school aspect you know what i mean it's just a smutty fun time it's a really fun setup and like it's just addictive and spicy and good and like i just they just gave me unabashed joy so i love them it's spot number eight we have fourth wing by rebecca yaros i mean this book literally took the book internet by storm this year and sorry to show off but I do, I do have the dragon edges because I had a feeling it was gonna get insane as the hype was building and building and I was like I need to snag this right away before I can't get them anymore and I'm very glad that I did um so if you don't know what fourth wing is it is a new adult fantasy romance and we're following Violet Sorengale who has been trained to be a scribe her whole life but then her mother who's the general is like actually you're gonna go join the writer's quadrant and basically like this is a very very brutal war college where you learn to become a dragon rider and one of the other people that's at that dragon school that probably wants to kill Violet is Zayden Ryarsen who is the son of the rebellion leader that Violet's mom killed so like he obviously has beef with her anyways it goes from there. I will say, like, this is just pure, like, addictive 
fantasy. Like, it's pretty... It's just easy to really, like, dig into it. It's fun. It's spicy. Like, it's action-packed. Like, is it the best thing? Is the writing the best ever? No, but I think it's just, like, so easily consumable and, like, fun that it makes it fun. And I loved it unabashedly. I will not be ashamed of my love for things, even if they are not the best written. If they are entertaining and they bring me joy, then I love them. So fourth wing, and then I will also include Iron Flame on this list because just continuation of that. Oh my god, what's going on? Um, and I'm very excited to see where the series goes. I'm just having a fun time, you know? Just having a fun time. So number seven is actually another alien romance, and this is probably my favorite favorite romance of the whole year. And it is Desire in His Blood by Zoe Draven. I dug into Zoe Draven's backlist this year, and honestly, everything she's written has been fantastic so far. I really, really love her. Her and Victoria Evelyn are my two favorite alien romance authors, I think, and also Ruby Dixon, but you know what? Icebladic Barbarians has been so popular for so long, I was dipping my toe in other other authors. So this is the first in her Brides of the Kylor series, and it is alien vampires. So, um, and what's interesting about this is like we're kind of in like an already established like sci-fi society so it's not like the woman is from earth but anyway she's on a human colony and her dad has accumulated a lot of debts and he runs this mine so they're kind of like an affluent family and there are these other society known as the Kylor and they're like kind of like gargoyles like they're gray they have wings um, and they drink blood and basically to pay off his debts the Kylor is like hey like I want to marry your daughter and he kind of just sells her off into marriage and she goes because she will like do anything to help her family and Azor our Kylor lord has a reason for wanting her within his clutches but the, the chemistry is chemistry in between the two and Gemma is like doesn't really want to be there but she will do it for her family and like she's just so like stubborn and like oh my god the back and forth between the two and just like the spice the tension that like everything about it I was clutching my pearls the entire time it was just like one of the most gripping romances I have ever read it was insane like I go back and I reread parts all the time like I loved it so much I definitely really want to get a physical copy but like I bought the ebook because I kept taking it out of Kindle Unlimited to like reread parts of it so like clearly I loved it a lot it oh my god like I know alien romance like what vampire alien romance like what like just give it a try just give it a try that's all I'm saying now we are moving on to the top six and it's so hard it's so hard to give them an order I like I'm honestly all of these books on the list I love them so so much Ugh, it pains me to put them in order, but I guess I'm doing that. I think last year my top book of the year was Belladonna by Adeline Grace, so no surprise we have Foxglove on this list. We are continuing the story of Cigna and Death, and we are also adding in her cousin Blythe and another kind of like godly figure, Fate, into the mix. This book I feel like is definitely a transition book because I think the first book really focuses on Cigna and Death. Then the second book is just like a mixture of all four characters and then I think the third book is going to focus more so on another couple. I don't hate it but I definitely think the first book was stronger but I still really loved this because Adeline Grace has such beautiful prose. I love the world and I really feel like this book delved more into the relationship between Cigna and Blythe and I enjoyed kind of that like sisterly dynamic where they're like at odds with one another because of things that are going on and Cigna's powers and it just worked. It worked for me. I loved it and I am really hoping that I enjoy Wisteria because I think it'll be a fun time. But it's very interesting because I feel like not many authors have structured their series like this where it's like about one couple then kind of about both couples then about the other couple but you know what it works it, it kind of makes sense for the story so I'm into it I like again loved this lots of beautiful prose just like really fun regency setting with like a death god and a fake god and just like all of these crazy things going on and a little bit of a murder mystery and it was just a great combination and a fun time. My love for Claire Legrand is no secret, um, so I was so surprised that her newest book, A Crown of Ivy and Glass, has landed on my list at number five. This book is so interesting and 
I feel like her books are always like very divisive where like people like love them or they hate them. I love them. Um, but I feel like this book, I saw some like not great reviews, but like I understand why because it starts out as one thing and then becomes another thing. But like I loved it. Okay, so this is a world where magic it kind of exists in this Regency society and we're following Lady Gemma Ashbourne who is a family that's been anointed which means they're all blessed with gifts and they're like rich nobility. But underneath all this glittering facade like Gemma is just deeply sad. Her mother abandoned their family. Her sister was kind of taken as a guard against this terrifying mist with monsters in it and then her oldest sister and her father are just really involved in this blood feud with another noble family and she just kind of feels like ignored and just really lonely on the inside. She also is the only one in her family that does not actually have any magic and her body fights the magic like a poison so instead the magic makes her sick and to me this was kind of like portrayed as a disability within this world because she was in chronic pain from having to deal with everyone around her and a society around her that relied on magic. Then she meets the devastatingly handsome Talon at one of her family's balls and his family was seduced by a demon and destroyed and now he is looking for vengeance. So Gemma is very intrigued by him and she proposes a bargain. If she helps him navigate high society he will help her destroy the Basque family and kind of end this feud between their two families. So this is very interesting because it's um it starts out very light and very regency and by the end of the book it kind of becomes like a fantasy horror and I think a lot of people probably went into this not expecting it but I loved it. You guys know that like fantasy horror like plant horror or just like anything like eldritch and like creepy oh my god I love it so so much and this book just does a good job of like starting out seemingly very light and then just getting crazy as it goes on um and this is actually kind of like going to be interconnecting standalones where I think each one of them is following one of the different sisters so I think the next one we're following the eldest sister Theron and one of the sons from the rival family which I'm so excited for um yeah I will continue to eat up everything that Claire Legrand writes pretty much I actually do still have some of her backlist titles that I've yet to read maybe I will read some of those this year um but those are more of like her horror like straight up like contemporary horror or urban horror I don't actually know um but like her high fantasy like Furyborn is my child I love that book so so much um and this is another favorite another hit and I'm so excited like I will screw about my love for this book endlessly from the rooftops Coming in at number four, we have A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. This is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. Actually, this is like the pre-order dust jacket that I have and it's so pretty, so I'm just gonna hold this one up. And this is like over the regular cover. Let me show you. Dee -dee -dee. So, um, where to even start with this? Because this is the last book in a spin-off series. Curse for True Love is the last in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. We are following Jax, who is the Prince of Heart, who is basically cursed to kill every girl that he kisses, and Evangeline, who is just like very naive and believes in magic, and basically Evangeline makes a bargain with Jax because her stepsister is marrying the boy that she loves, and things just go awry, and she gets pulled in to going up to the magnificent north which is just like this beautiful whimsical enchanted land and honestly I know there are so many mixed reviews about this I feel like the conclusion to a series is always going to draw a lot of mixed reviews but I loved it it just really captured the whimsy and the enchantedness of this series so much and like finally 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 Jax admits his feelings like when I read one of his POV chapters and he was like yearning and pining oh my god it just it was everything to me a plot of this one was interesting but I think it makes sense if you think back to the first book and kind of the situation that eventually got herself in with Apollo like that storyline kind of needed to be wrapped up and you see him back here I think the thing about Stephanie Garber is she is never going to be one to give like a bow tied on it perfect ending she leaves a lot of open-ended questions for the reader to interpret and also with all of the bonus epilogues like I think she is going to be continuing her next series in this world with other characters that were introduced in this book too, but I feel like it answered enough questions to be satisfied. Besides the apple question, 
but I think I think I can kind of interpret an answer from what was given but I was also like when I saw that I was like uh, um, so I don't know I love it I think you have to kind of temper your expectations of what a book is going to give you to the author's style so I kind of went into it knowing that Stephanie Garber was not going to give necessarily an answer for everything or that sometimes the answer is just nonsense because it's like a nonsense and not like saying nonsense in a bad way but it's like a very nonsensical magic system and that is part of its charm but I loved it I love Evangeline Jacks so much and I was very very happy with this conclusion in spot number three we have A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed this book just I think of the, all the books on my list, this is the book that really just like packed the most emotional punch because like I, it's just crazy. It's crazy man. Okay so and it, it's a combination of a bunch of different things that wouldn't make sense but like it does make sense you know what I mean? So it's kind of like a dark academia but also like horror like and okay let me just let me just get to explaining it so I can get more into my thoughts but we're following Effie and she is a student in the architecture college but she really wants to be studying literature however literature is reserved only for men in this world because they're like only men are smart enough to analyze literature and so she is in the architecture college which is like the second best school that she's and the only one that she's allowed into that's like that good. So ever since she was a child she's been plagued with visions of the fairy king and the one thing that gives her solace is this book called Angerad which is about said fairy king. Then the author Meriden, who has recently passed, his estate announces a contest to have a student redesign his estate and because Effie is in the architecture college she applies and she wins and so she is sent down south to this like very misty drenched like wet humid seaside crumbling seaside estate to be tasked with redesigning this manor. And while she's there she also meets another student from her college, Preston, who is studying in the literature college and is looking at Meriden's works. However, he is trying to prove that Meriden didn't actually write Angerad. And they kind of, for a rivalry, because Effie's like, that is my favorite book in the world and means everything to me. And what they discover is crazy and I think what this book does really well is blurs the line between reality and fantasy like within this book you don't know always like is Effie being an unreliable narrator is it all in her head is it real you know people around her doubt her a lot and it really is just about being a woman and someone else taking the power away from you to tell your own story and like Effie faces that over and over and there are just more themes like that that come up and like it just it just seems like something that would be so like ephemeral and like hard to grasp that like wouldn't work but yet Ava Reed has captured it in such a way that it, wor it works it works and it packs an emotional punch and after reading this book I was like bereft I was like speak like it was just so good it was so good and it just really it does a lot in not that many pages and it was a book that I felt like I could really sink my teeth into in terms of like I was like putting my literary analysis hat and like uh when I was annotating it I was like forming theories and like writing little notes in the margin and it just felt like a book about the love of books and so like I don't know it just felt like very personal and just so good just so good and also like Preston like it really just shows in this book like Effie who's dealt with like toxic partners and then we have the story of Engrad which is also about a very toxic relationship to then kind of have this contrast to like a partner that's like, just like very warm and supportive without question and I loved it. Then at number two we have Bewitched by Laura Thalassa which this book was just so much fun. It was so much fun. We have Celine who is a witch and she wants to get into a coven which is basically like universities. In order to do that is you kind of have to like go on a quest and prove your worth and so she is on a plane to her quest to apply for this coven and her plane crashes and she saves the plane with her power but when she is there the plane actually had crashed because the supernatural force was like pulling her down and she wakes up this guy so basically she's accidentally awoken an ancient evil called Memnon. He thinks that she is his wife and she's like what are you talking about? I'm a 20 year old witch. 
but he, no, he is convinced that she is his wife and he follows her back to this magic coven and kind of, you know, and is very adamant that she is his wife, but also his wife locked him in a tomb for 2,000 years and so he's a little bit mad. So it's kind of like a, a toxic relationship dynamic, but she is no, I'm not your wife. Uh, however, using her witch powers eats at her memories. So she has huge gaps in her memories and like has a really hard time even figuring out what happened to her last week. Uh, this was just so much fun. I loved like the paranormal witch university. The push and pull between Memnon and Selene was crazy and it ended on a little bit of a cliffhanger and I need to know what happens next but like it was just kept me entertained, kept me hooked and I really really loved this so much. I had so much fun. It's book number two. And my number one book of the year. I don't know if you guys would know it or not. Like, I don't know. I don't know if you would guess it or not. But anyways, it's Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Marer. I keep saying Marer, but I've heard other people say Meyer. I don't know. Um, anyways, this book, I feel like, just gave me such a warm and fuzzy feeling and I loved it so so much. It's literally about a villain who is like running like an office and Evie becomes his assistant and it is just hijinks and it's just fun and like uh, it's just like clearly like two idiots in love basically the whole time because Evie and the villain like clearly have the hots for one another but they're like so in denial about their feelings and it is just so fun and so cute and there's like obviously like more things going on in the plot but like honestly and then also there is a talking frog called Kingsley and if you really like like the princess diaries Ella enchanted like that kind of vibe where it's fantasy but it's like very campy and fun I think that you will really enjoy this book and like I honestly like I was just smiling the entire time that I read it and I feel like that is how it has earned my, the number one spot of my top 10 books of 2023 because it just made me so happy when I think about it I just like that's how I feel. So that's all. And uh, that was my top 10 books of 2023. Oh, well, it was more than 10. To be frank, it was more than 10. But those are my top books of the year. 2024 is a new year and there's more books to explore, more books to love. And making this video just made me so happy because I just love talking about my favorite books that I really loved and getting to gush over them with you guys. And like, it's just fun. It's just heartwarming. Um, if you get to the end of this video let's leave just like a little pink heart emoji for love because i loved all of these books um okay uh let me know down below in the comments what was your top book of 2023 and have some fun read the books and i'll catch you guys in the next one